welcome to the MBS True Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. I think I'm getting the black lung. <laughs> oh no, you better stop smoking, man. I can't. It happens every time I get blown up. Oh no, did you scan first? No, I did not scan anything. Scanning gets you eaten. But how could I help you if you don't scan? You can get me off this water planet. <laughs> All right then. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. I'm fine. You're fine. Everything's fine. Indeed, we are all fine. Yeah. But anywho, <laughs> uh, with that confusion out of the way, in today's episode review, we are going to review season seven, episode twenty, uh, "Health of Information." In this episode, Sakura comes down with swamp fever, a disease for which no cure has been discovered, and Fluttershy makes it her mission to heal her. Will she succeed? Will she fail? Find out next. But before that, let's get into first impressions. Silver, my man, what did you think? Everyone except Ho Fluttershy is horrible. This is a strange episode for that. You've really only got two other ponies and Zakura in this episode. Well, and the historical mage Meadowbrook. But season seven has been a strange time for Fluttershy. They've done away with the whole, oh, I'm so shy, I don't know if I want to do this. And now she's being bold and assertive and going forward. But in this episode, that comes at the expense of Twilight and uh, Ponyville's doctor. Mm -hmm. And also Cattail. Oh, right, Cattail. I forgot Cattail. Well, Cattail's cool. But he's just like, is this how it has to be? You've got Fluttershy being bold and driven and Twilight's worried about breakfast? That just seems wrong. It's wrong, I tell you. I think there is a reason. Like, the writing here is makes sense to me, but, you know, I'm going to leave that for when we have to go deep into it. <laughs> go deep. Oh, my, Norman, how, how could you? <laughs> uh, I blame you, Silver. You're the one that put me on this path. Oh, oh, I see how it is. Blame the hippogriff. Everybody blame the hippogriff. <laughs> anyway, Seppi. I hug the hippogriff. Uh, Seppi, what about you? What do you think of this episode? This episode reminds me of two things. Oh? One, either Blissey and her 6 to one rule. <laughs> or two, me when I'm too stubborn to go back to sleep. <laughs> ah, alrighty then, alrighty then. And as for me, this episode was a load of fun. I, I do enjoy Fertishai's over assertiveness for this one and going beyond the call of duty to help Zakura till putting her own life at risk. So yeah, it's a nice change of pace, but the situation that she was in, yeah, I, I see that she really, really wanted to get this done and over with just because she felt responsible for it. But anywho, if you guys have not watched this episode yet, um, pause here and go watch it. And welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. So anyway, let's head into the review. So we start off with our heroes just hanging out in the swamp, getting some muck for Fluttershy's uh, animal sanctuary. And yeah, um, I'm a bit confused here. Well, why is Zakura helping Fluttershy with this case? I mean, couldn't Fluttershy... Go get it herself. Therein is the first flaw of this here episode. For sex expertise, I guess? I don't know. Maybe like she knew That where. might be the reason why. Maybe she knew where to get the moss? That, that, or, okay, uh, the only reason why I'm saying this is because Fluttershy can fly. She could just flap her wing and go get it. And, yeah, it's easily solvable. Her wing wasn't working that day. <sighs> Maybe she's having Hydra flashbacks. <laughs> yeah. But anywho, uh, one slip up causes a branch to break and Zakura fell into the swamp. And you know what? It ain't all that bad. Uh, falling into the swamp allows her to get a whole bunch of muck. So she gets muck and heads to shore. Unfortunately, there's some kind of flower that pollinate on her. Ew. Actually, if you watch this scene in hindsight, it's it, there's almost a sinister uh, action to it. Oh. Because as soon as she's in the water, the tree dumps a plant 
and floats it right in her path, almost like it's taking aim. <laughs> Fire in the hole! And all it's I'm thinking of... It's trees and equestrian including Br- Bloomberg. <laughs> and I'm thinking of G.I. Joe the movie. Oh. No! Not the spores! Not the spores! <laughs> uh, it's okay. No get in a coma. No get in a coma. <laughs> that kills any dramatic uh, attention, although it doesn't kill my favorite show. <laughs> uh, <coughs> uh, so talking about dramatic tension, uh, Zakura comes to shore all wet and polka dotty with orange spots. Oh no, this is not natural. And Splatishai gasp. And we head to the doctors. Yes, we head to the doctors. And I guess. Yeah. Alright. I'm assuming this guy's an HMO doctor. <laughs> okay, why? Because he doesn't give a fig about his patients. Nah man, nah man. I I have doctor friends and most of them are detached. They have to. It's part of the job. Well, yeah. Well, this guy is basically saying, You're host, you're gonna die, and I'm not even gonna try and find a treatment. See ya! That's not detachment. <laughs> That's, I'm overdue for my coffee break. Okay, but seriously, um, the current Fluttish Chai goes to the doctor, and the doctor checks her out. And doing a few tests, um, right now Sakura has spots, coughing bubbles. Uh, said so doctor catches bubbles and put it into a, a jar and shakes it. Who's Sakura? I didn't know we were watching an anime. Sakura? What are you talking about? I think you you're, <laughs> you call Zakura Sakura. Oh, you might have misheard me then. But anywho. Yes. Well, I don't know. I actually to all the our listeners that sounds like a fan art challenge. <laughs> Card capture Zakura. <laughs> Make it happen. Yay, but anywho, Dr. Shakes bottle and says as long as the water doesn't turn red, she's safe. Oh no, water turns blood red. You're screwed, you're screwed. And the reason why is you have this illness called the swamp fever. It First it starts out with you having polka dots and then coughing bubbles. Then you spout branches. Then you turn into a tree. And Flutter tries all like, I'm so jealous. <laughs> oh no. In really, she's like, Sakura, you biznatch, you've taken my dream. And with the diagnosis, the doctor says, there's no known cure. You're screwed. So anyway, I'm going to go get my coffee. You go have fun. Have fun. Yep. Don't die. <laughs> and Zakura says, oh, I'll be fine. I- I'm sure there's a cure somewhere. And Fluttershy says, yeah, we, we got to find a cure. I, I need to... Right, this wrong. I'm I'm sorry because of me. You're sick. Okay, we, we need to do this. We need to do this. Let's do things. And Zakura says, "Yeah, I I'm sure we can do things. Um, I think you can do things at Twilight's library. Yes, books. Go go look into books. Yes. Well, truly, they're looking for the the legendary healer who could cure any disease. So they need a bit of history. And who's the history buff? Twilight, Twilight Sparkle. Also, who's in an adorable hat? Twilight Sparkle. And Spike. Exactly. Yay. So, uh, Fluttershy goes to the castle, barrages into Twilight's room. Poor etiquette. Like, could you just imagine what would happen if Twilight was snoring in there? Like, good gosh. You could hear some uh, funny dreams. Eh, no, Flash, not the raspberry <laughs> sauce. Let's get the marshmallow fluff this time. <laughs> Uh, boys. But anywho, glad glad that she's not there. And Fluttershy finds Twilight in the kitchen, baking. And it seems that Twilight and Spike are having a bake off, seeing whose dish are the best. Uh, I think sweet potato muffins for Twilight and cauliflower. What's now for Spike? Here we go. Spike, my cauliflower bites blew her sweet potato muffins out of the water. Uh, cauliflower, oh, I, I didn't catch that. It's really unmemorable. What was it again? Well, it's so unmemorable, I even lost, uh... <laughs> sweet. I think it was something about blueberry sweet potato muffins. There are no blueberries. <laughs> My cauliflower bites oh, cauliflower blew bites. her sweet potato 
muffins out of the water. Okay, cauliflower bites. Yeah. <laughs> See, even Seppi doesn't. I'm like not it. real big on sweet potatoes and cauliflower. So I, I, I already assumed that I repressed this memory. <laughs> I like sweet potatoes, but cauliflower is just sort of there. Yeah. <laughs> cauliflower, I have trauma over that I'd rather not discuss. And sweet potatoes, just. My grandma tries to force that That's not a word. down my throat. Oh, you oh. haven't tried the good kind of... Okay, okay, okay. I have trauma. It's okay. <laughs> You've also invoked the wrath of the sweetie bot. Why? How come? Because she dropped a, a four-letter word in that. Really? I didn't? Okay, never mind. Sweetie bot needs to search that one out. <laughs> but anywho, uh, Fluttershy drags Twilight to the library. And explaining that Zakura's sick because of me and we need to find a cure. Or at least we need to find a reference for a cure for something because there's a legendary healer that could heal anything. So we need to scan books. Let's do it. Now this is where I feel like the, this episode does Twilight a disservice. She seems bored with this. Or uninvested. There's no sense of urgency. And why is it just Twilight and Fluttershy? Zakura has saved the main six on several occasions. She's been the uh, deus ex more times than we could count. True, but at, uh, for for explanation for why it's just the two of them, let's just say budgetary and time keep reasoning and to make the story more focused. So let's just say oh, that. No, 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 man, I can't accept that because that's basically admitting we did this because this is an artificial story. And not really. I, I do kind of understand the it, situation for just the two of them but the part where twilight is bored by reading books and not remembering her own books that is off a bit I'm, all i'm saying is that twilight just needs to throw in a line saying apple jacks at a f- helping out an apple loose so rarities at a fashion show in canada a lot rainbows at a wonderbolt show yeah, yeah. pinkie pie is babysitting missing in action oh, okay basically just say the other four are engaged and they can't help out so it's down to the two of them true and also don't forget um starlight she lives there well starlight starlight seems to vanish for days on end without it being seen it's a bit weird <laughs> yeah she's still on care a lot high <laughs> with sunset uh, that's my canon <clears throat> all righty then but anywho uh situation is they look for books and after a few hours they look at every book in twilight's library and couldn't find any and Twilight, being tired, sleeps on books. And it's just so adorable. But then she goes to bed. Meanwhile, Fluttershy, out Twilight's Twilight. Yeah, and this is the part where I have to agree with you, Silver, that this is so not like Twilight because she's not invested. Like, she's not even saying that, okay, um, we'll pick this up back in the morning because right now I'm a bit tired and we should get some rest. Like, eh? Is it me? No, right? Well, it's not you. This is the strange thing about Twilight. She She's worried more about breakfast than, than Sakura's health. Her friend could turn into a tree. Basically, not a physical death, but a death of the mind. Which you'd think Twilight would be all over preventing. But no, she's just sort of, ah, do we really have to go? Do we really have to do this, that, or the other thing? I want to have breakfast. I want to sleep in. This is not Twilight Sparkle. Of all the main six, she is the most motivated. Yeah, yeah. How do I even put this? Because I see what you mean. And uh, I hate to use this word, but Twilight seems out of character here. Yeah, that that seems fair. I haven't, I haven't used that term since uh, The Good, The Bad, and The Ponies, where she was completely apathetic to the plight of a town. Why is it when Twilight's out of character, suddenly everyone around her starts suffering more? Yeah, but it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad because even though initially Twilight does seem out of character, but in the morning, after kind of a quick breakfast or whatnot, uh, Fluttershy barges in and tells Twilight that she discovered the healer and who she is after doing some cross-referencing between books and... This part here is where I am happy for Fluttershy because gee, you did a good job. Good on you, Fluttershy. Gold stickers abound. Yes. So, anywho, she discovered that said healer is Mage Meadow Brooks, one of the legendary healers of Equestria. 
and just saying something about mask and point referencing, blah, 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 and so on. So, yeah, they know a location to start looking and it's hayseed swamps. I think that's way down south by the bayou. As long as it's not near that fire swamp where the bayou ponies nearly got apple bloom killed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is great. Th- this just shows how terrible the hospital is even further. Instead of at least pretending to Zakura and making her final days as comfortable as possible, they kick her out and send her back to her home in the middle of the Everfree Forest. It could be What's the, the flip. Sakura could be the one that insisted on going back home. I'm not. I'm not having that, Norman. I'm, th- this this hospital is not showing me its best face, and so, thus I, I declare epic fail. No comment on that one. But anywho. Zakura here looks to be a bit tired and out of it, and she ain't be rapping, yo. Kill me. <laughs> oh, oh, Dizam. Yeah, yeah. She she lost her rhyme. She she don't know rhyming. I just came back from seeing Black Panther, and I can automatically declare that that's racist. But how so? You know why. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So now <laughs> Zakura is. Um, sneezing lightning, yes. Was it thunder? No, lightning. Lightning is the light that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta say, equestrian diseases are at least interesting. Oh yeah, true that. True. That. I, I mean, most humans just cough up like phlegm or blood, mucus or blood. You know, kind of the boring Gross stuff. Things. Yeah. Just the boring stuff. Being able to to sneeze lightning that'd be a charge. Oh yeah. Ha. Uh, but Let's see what your old man. <laughs> But anywho, so the shy and twilight fly off to the hay sweet swamps, and it seems a bit abandoned. <laughs> and it seems like that one town in Resident Evil Four. Remember that one? Nope, because I don't play video games. Oh no! Oh wait, is is that the one with all the the Spanish people trying to kill you? Yes, that one. Yep. Yep. It seems similar to that one. Hmm, I wonder why. But anywho, they spot a tree house similar to Zakura, and it's locked. And Fluttershy's answer to this is, Stand back, Twilight. I shall dig us away in with my hooves. Yes, we shall do that. The Diamond Dog should have kidnapped Fluttershy instead of Rarity. She knows how to put in hard work. Nah, man. Like, way back when, Fluttershy would just stall and... Um, panic and you know just turn into stone like eh, sh- she'll freeze you never know anywho twilight just stops her and says but the shy how about we use the door knob and they do and they break an entry personal property what's that <laughs> yes indeed uh but they do comment that oh my gosh this place is so dusty it seems like nobody's lived in here for years and they discover the um, plant that causes the illness, the seed swamp lily pad thingy. Yes. The swamp fever. Yeah, the swamp fever. And then the Twilight just says, uh, don't get too excited now. We don't know if we can find a cure. And then Twilight hears a squeak. Like, oh, Fluttershy, what did I say? You're you're getting excited. And Fluttershy says, um, that was not me look left on scene, and discover that they're not alone. Scream. Eee! Yes, the Alicorn Princess who went hoof to hoof with Tyrek. Uh, and Raven. Scream is not a thing in the... Uh, oh, she's, well, she has reason to be afraid of Raven. <laughs> yes. Uh, but still, yes. Um, screaming, and they discover that they're not alone because Sid Hut has an inhabitant, and Sid inhabitant is uh, Cattail. And he is the descendant of Meadowbrooks. So, yay! Although this throws the whole descendant thing into question. I don't even know if this is accurate. Can descendant mean that you're the great, great, whatever, nephew of someone and still call them your, their descendant? Related, family related. So, yes. Yeah, but I've always, I've always taken descendant to mean as direct descendant. Well, if you look at the family tree, you can say they're part of the family. As long as they're connected. Oh, this is great. Dictionary.com. A person, plant, or animal that is descended from a particular ancestor. You're using the word in its own definition. That is not good. That is a bad definition. And you should feel bad for defining it. What? Dictionary.com or me? 
The dictionary.com. Oh. <laughs> but if you want to feel bad, I won't stop. Oh, I feel bad. Uh, okay, then. <laughs> That's nice. Anyways. Yeah, anyways. We've come to terms. <laughs> Cattail here says, Yo, girl, relax. I own the crib. I kind of take care of it because in my family script, yo. Silver, <laughs> make him stop. Uh, Cattail be like, Oh, oh, Dizam, we got some fly honeys up in this crib. <laughs> What's your sign, girl? You people make me cringe. <laughs> what, what do you mean, you people? <laughs> you people know what I mean. What? <laughs> so, anywho, um, Fluttershy and Twilight explains that one of their friend has the swamp fever and they need to find a cure. And Cattail here says, okay, if you want to find a cure, she probably Meadowbrooks wrote it down in one of her books. So, let's go to the library. Twilight's excited because libraries involve, and said library is just a bookshelf. Yes, you well, call this a library? Well, I love Twilight's line: "Any pony that lives in a tree is fine with me." Yep. <laughs> so after reading the diaries or journals, and one line that I find very fascinating here is that Twilight is reading one of Meadowbrook's um, journal and involves. A cult being mean to Meadowbrook, and Meadowbrook put a frog on his head. And Twilight seems really interested in where this story goes. Romance are ahead. Yeah, well, her friend's about to be turned into a tree. But no, let's find out about something that happened ages ago. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but still, Fluttershy um, stops her and says that, Hey, look at this. I think this is something fascinating. And we go to the flashback. And yes. We head to the flashback and we hear how Meadowbrook is trying to cure a chipmunk who has a blocked nose and her medicine works. Yay. She's cured the common cold. Yay. It's electrifying. So, yay. And with that cure, Mama Meadowbrook says, Honey, you're ready for this and hands her a present. Meadowbrook opens it and... It's a mask. Somebody stop her. So, after receiving the mask, they hear a knock at the door. And here more problem begins. It seems that the whole town is infected by the swamp fever. Mama Meadowbrook's trying to find a cure. And unfortunately, she's infected too. Now it's all up to Meadowbrook's to find a cure. Dun dun dun. Actually, they're not done. But... Yep, yep. So... Meadowbrook sits by the um, pond and sees the plant in its natural habitat and sees, what is this plant? How does it do stuff? Like, I want to research this. And notice that there are some flash bees and they're not affected by it. And Eureka, she found the answer. And said answer is the honeys. Eat the honey. Yeah. Eat the honey. Because the bees are not affected by the pollen, by the... Um, swamp lily pad thingy and the bees are immune to the uh, pollens and whatnot. so the honey must have a cure for them so let's go so she goes to the flesh beehive and it seems that these bees are very very aggro aggressive you mean not aggro uh, aggressive aggro indeedy yeah but uh, either way, the very territorial is like, step off our crib, yo. Don't be hating. Yeah, you came to the wrong neighborhood, pony. Have I ever expressed how much I despise you two? <laughs> yes. Uh, d- not within the last minute. Oh. I hate you guys. I hate you guys. I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, Meadowbrook comes back, donning her mask. And she got honey. Yes. Okay, what? Well, she it doesn't show in the flashback that she got the honey. Oh yeah, she got the honey. It's just, she, she, well, it shows her getting knocked out. Then it shows that she did get the honey, but it doesn't say how. Yeah, um, that's the important. True, true. I do see the screenshots now where she does have the mask. She's very tiny. But anywho, um, she cures the what you call this illness, and Fluttershy says, "Yes, I think I know the thing now. Yes, the honey. Yes, yes." And everybody's shocked because Fluttershy has the illness too. Get down with the illness. Wah, ah, 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 ah. 
No. Wow, Norman. Norman. Wow, Norman. No. Even, even I thought that was too white. <laughs> no, that wasn't white. That was lame. I mean, I mean that's that, that's more like you're trying to start your car. Wow. <laughs> It's like you're trying to make a disturbed reference while well, you failed. Well, I'm disturbed by that. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, um, Silver, you want to carry on? <laughs> I don't know, Norman. I, I'm I'm dealing with a chronic depression over how bad that was. <laughs> and now you know how I feel very, very often. Ah, uh, girl, you know we'd be feeling for you. <laughs> Well, now now I've reduced, reduced Norman to giggles and Safi to tears. <laughs> so basically, Twilight, everybody tries on a different mask to go out and talk to Jan Bees. Bees, my God. <laughs> oh, I forgot to put the reference. All righty then. Good job. But uh, the bees are not having it. So Twi Fluttershy tries her natural animal charm. And when that doesn't work, she tries the stare. And the bees are like, oh, Dizam, now we're going to throw down. T time to cap a pony up in this biznatch. Ooh, it's bees, though, so it's biznatch. <laughs> <Natch. laughs> and Fluttershy, she's just, ah, I'm fading, fading, falling. And, and she, she wakes, wakes up in bed three days later. Three days and it turns out now. Thankfully, uh, Twilight has not been idle in this time. She's tried using magic to get the bees out of the way and failed. Mm -hmm. I, this defies my understanding. This is a princess who can who can invert gravity. Apparently, she needn't fear ravens. She needs to fear bees. My God! Again. Yes, and it seems that Twilight and Cattail were busy. Like for those three days, they did not sit on their butts doing nothing. They tried to get the honey. Don't you mean busy? <laughs> yes, busy. So yes, um, they tried everything and even unmentionable things that should never be mentioned. Oh my! What the macarena? Oh, I told you not to mention it. <laughs> but I do, I do like the shiver that Cattail did. It's, it's an added scenario where it's fun <laughs> leave it up to their imagination and once again convenient lighting you know a, a, a bee alights upon the mask just as a bee passed over the swamp spores it's just like wow all you have to do is sit there and wait for the bees to show you they're the they're like miraculous in that polka dot vision <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, and also don't forget um they mentioned disguises and that sparks the whole uh, mask thing and yes, the mask that Meadowbrook wore has the same stripe as the queen. And the worker bees are very affectionate for the queen. So with that, Fluttershy got the honey and found the cure. Huzzah! Yay, so the, huzzah. The, the day is saved with the power of cosplay. Yes. Yes. So I think Fluttershy had some for her own cure. Goes back to Ponyville to cure Zakura, and also the doctor. Uh, okay, I need to ask you guys this. How does this disease work? It's contagious. But how? You're asking me how, uh, how it causes the lungs to spontaneously adopt bubbles, then tricks the glands into, into secreting lightning, then causes the skin to undergo a rapid change into bark and leaves. And basically, you're asking me to truncate this ex explanation. Yes. Well, magic. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll buy it. Uh, so, after curing everybody, including the doctor, episode ends. Well, I want to I want to clarify, they don't cure the doctor on screen. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, you need to cure he, the doctor. I don't know. He was not exactly a credit to his profession. I think he's the only doctor I'm... in Equestria. No, no. There's the doctor that looks like Caramel. Really? With a, with a horn. Yeah, I know that guy. The one who treated Rainbow Dash for her broken, injured wing. No, I guy, remember him. If he's such a cruddy doctor, maybe he can at least offer shade to the residents. <laughs> oh, but no, man. She's, he's going to infect everyone later on with his pollen and whatnot. So, no. 
But anywho, with that episode ends. Oh, fun fact I forgot to mention. In one of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic comics, Cattail appeared before this episode came out. Yeah, that... Oh, when? Yeah, there was... Uh, the release schedules had been screwed up to All Kingdom Come. Yep. And so we learned about Cattail in the comics more than we did in the show first. And that's a bitter pill. Feels like the whole... They were trying so hard to tie everything together, and it just wasn't working. Yep, yep. And, oi, that was a bit confusing. Just a little bit, but at least we know that Cattail got a girlfriend after this. Yeah, man. Oh, nice. Cattail got busy. Oh, my. But anywho, but anywho. Uh, let's hit into final thoughts. And, Silver, what do you think of this episode? Well, uh, following up on Cattail and the girlfriend, maybe you can teach her about the birds and the bees. <laughs> yeah. But this episode, it is fun. It, it's it got a silly disease and it gets to show Fluttershy at her most proactive. But I find that I'm focusing so much on Twilight's distracted nature and how oddly unfocused she's become. This doesn't feel like the Twilight we've been watching over the seasons. Hmm. And the her unfocused, the apathy of the Doctor, if not for Fluttershy and Cattail, I think that I'd call this episode a wash. Would you call Cattail a cool cat? Oh, he he's, he'd be straight up tripping, yo. <laughs> uh, but I think Ballin. the doctor there is just playing the trope of the uncaring doctor. Well, great, but I don't believe we There's needed an that uncaring trope. Uncaring doctor trope? Yes, of course. Well, I don't that's know. If, I don't know if we needed that trope. I don't think that trope was uh, called for. Mm-hmm. Oh, Doctor Horse. Uh, yes, but uh, anything else to add on silver? Love the addition of the bees and even the subtle menace of these spores showing that <clears throat> I've joked that the uh, Everfree Forest has lost its teeth. And I don't know if this is in the Everfree Forest. I mean, it is a swamp. But it's nice to know that Equestria still has a few threats out there that can take people unawares. Oh, true that. Now, one of, one of the funnier things about this, after a perfect pair and this came out, a lot of fl- fans flocked to the idea that... Uh, Pear Butter and Bright Macintosh are not dead. They were just turned into trees. Because everyone wants to hold out the hope that they'll come back somehow. Oh, wow, no. Uh, just no. Wait, does this mean they turned into the tree that they left behind? No. I don't believe so, but other people want to. No. But also, if you don't, if they don't want to know how it comes back to life, other people want to know, how did they die? Oh, yeah, I want to too. Like, that is... I want to. Like, what? That's, That's morbid. morbid. Yeah, Norman. I'm curious, like, how did they move on? Normally, Norman, you sick. Yeah, no, moving on is is usually the process by which the the loved family members have to do. I don't know. I don't know about the actual disease. That just sounds weird. <laughs> Norman. Okay. Okay. Norman, Norman first, first. Norman, you sick. First, first, you you you, you sound like a starting up car. <laughs> <laughs> And now you're now you're you're more interested in how two ponies died. I think you need help. Probably. <laughs> but anywho, Seppi, what about you? I didn't remember a lickest thing about this episode. Really now. That is all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and as for me, this episode was really entertaining. Uh, the issue is with a, a bit with Twilight. Silver needed to point out some few things to make me notice a few things about Twilight, and yes. Uh, Twilight here seems a bit out of character, even though I do not like to use that word. But yes, she's a bit out of character for this episode. But the assertive Fluttershy here is a A+. Plus. I do like how assertive Fluttershy is, and she's not going to stop until she gets things done. This reminds me of that one episode with Fluttershy and Discord, where she did everything in her power to... Get this Scott back to his old self. Yeah. But I do remember something. This episode here is a pillar episode. Uh, one of the legends of magics. And the star character, Mage Meadowbrook here. What do you guys think of her? Well, I know her more from the, the Legends of Magic comics as it is now. Mm-hmm. And I, I enjoyed her. This one, she's... she How to describe this? She's already... Uh, Learning, she's already got her her uh, approval from her more experienced mother. This is her at the start of her journey, truly. And so 
we get to see her determination, but we don't get to see a lot of personality, especially since she doesn't speak. Mm, mm, mm. It's in Legends of Magic, truly, where she you get to see that she's both very insightful, but she's also got a wild and maybe even combative side. Ah, true that, true that. And, well, I also forgot to mention that this episode here is Patreon sponsored by Starstream. Thank you so much, my friend. It's been a while since we get to do this. But anywho, um, with that, uh, episode ends. And I think we should um, head out. Yes, Silva? Yes, we should We should shuffle on out. But su- shuffle on out so that we can talk again about Friends Forever. Indeed, indeed. We collectively have covered the entire series. And so, therefore, it's time to look back at our favorites. A top ten for each of us. Yes. I had to force myself to look at the list. <laughs> so, yes, we have to... Look at the top 10. So anywho, that will be next week's episode. I hope you guys will enjoy that one. And also, if you like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and coffee.com. With every support, you'll get early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lurker, Catch, Starstream, myself, like Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also Tristan. Thank you, guys. You have been really awesome. And Sappy, you mentioned to me that you wanted to plug in your Patreon thing. I just want more coffee. Send me more coffee. And where can they do so? Coffee.com slash AMA Christie. Alrighty then. You heard her, folks. Go and support her if you have the extra bucks. Coffee, coffee, coffee. Also, every uh, $6 you send me, I make a sketch. I make a sketch. $3 extra if you want more characters. Okay? Okay. So, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Quill. And I have a dog licking my hand. Oh, that's so cute. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the Yes Show. See ya. Adios. Bye-bye. Oh, I think I got a so true now. Oh, help. No.